the bastard couldn't even say hello. You're that big a star that you can't even open your mouth to say one word. Been watching him for years on the telly. Thought I lived and all that. Now I think he's one of them slimy adders I squished with me axe just last week in the backyard. Won't be so high and mighty anymore, will he? Once he sees what I've got for him, I'll be chuffed to bits when I pull this off. Midnight Malamance was the dish of the night and it was a bloody good one. I'd outdone myself. I yanked my grotty balaclava down over my face and tried not to scratch myself with my bristly pokey hair that needed a shave underneath. It had been giving me grief for a while, but I was nonplussed and not in the mood for shaving. No matter. Grains of gravel that I brought in from the outside crunch underfoot as I moved slowly over the terracotta garden path to the back door of the pub. The air was fresh and crispy. So much so, my trench coat collar was up around my ears. The cold caused my shoulders to hunch up a little. At a touch of arthritis these days, my neck got a little stiffer than I wanted to admit. Still got around all right though for an old codger. Couldn't keep a good man down in all that business. I blew out a hard breath and a translucent wisp of fog left my lips as I patted around to find the old jagged rock at the back of the pub. Same place. The bleak yaws of Yorkshire never changed. I pulled the old antique key out of its hiding spot and slotted it into the back door. A heavy oak door that stood the test of time. It led into the pub storeroom and I clocked my toe on something immediately upon entry. Must be barking mad to put that in the middle of the door. I cursed under my breath to no one as I ran into a large wooden crate full of items. I pulled my large torch out of my trouser pockets, creeping quietly, one foot in front of the other towards the kitchen. A solace and peace came over me the further I moved in. One that was governed by the fact that Daniel Paul, with the two first names, was on his way out. Bloody American. Who do you think he was coming in to take over? I shone the dim torch light over the tiny kitchen, starting to flicker in and out, which meant my batteries were about to die. Had to work swiftly. Spotless. Not a breadcrime. Anywhere in sight. Looked like Mr. Daniel Paul ran a tight ship pity the previous owner couldn't have taken a leaf out of his book. Shame about the rat infestation. The health inspector found, hey? My black leather gloves gripped around the stainless steel door handle and opened to a gust of frozen cold air. It was a large commercial fridge full of half-cooked ingredients, jugs and plastic containers of different coloured liquids and sauces gingerly touched the food items carefully so as not to disturb any of the preparations I knew nothing about. The most apt dish. Hmm. A dew drop of poison in the milk? That would surely hit the bloodstream rather quickly, would it not? Go down a real treat with the ridiculous townsfolk. I didn't care for them either. And nor them for me. Especially since the incident. The one no one wanted to talk about. It wasn't my fault, and I had nothing to do with it in the end. My main companion, occupying my mind and heart, was my blue-haired Russian cat, Humphrey, and that's how I liked it. Be it he was a grumpy old man like me that enjoyed opening his claws every now and then, my forearm was still healing from an unhinged attack that I couldn't retreat from fast enough. A swab of dead hole and a gauze bandage fixed that. We all lash out from time to time, and Humphrey was no exception. Death be the order of the day. Perhaps an injection of the purple liquid into the fresh plump oranges that sat defiantly on the front of the fridge. Hmm. No, I see just the dish. Rhubarb and strawberry pie look just the ticket. The uncooked pastry sat on top in wide crisscross strips ready for the oven. I shakily pulled out my small purple vial with its dropper and squeezed a healthy dose into the juicy gelatinless globs of rhubarb and strawberry. Broad smile swept over my face as I rubbed my hands together in glee and I snuck out into the cloaked darkness of the night. Everyone will be dying to eat at Stout's Corner Pub now.